So the brand new iPhone 12 and the Samsung Galaxy S20 are honestly more similar than you might realize, which means that a lot of people might be deciding between these two phones, which is why I decided to make this video breaking down the differences between the brand new iPhone 12, not the Pro or Max or, or Mini, just the regular iPhone 12 and the Samsung Galaxy S20. Again, not the Pro or the Ultra, just the regular S20. So these are both coming out to be a very, very similar price now. So I'll put links to the latest prices in the description below, but the Galaxy S20 was released least at $1,000 and is now selling for just $800. And on the flip side, the iPhone 12 was released at $800, but if you want it to be an unlocked phone, there's an extra $30. And if you want it to have the same storage, being 128 gigabytes, it's $880. And once you factor in the differences in what come in the box, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, it's easily a $120 price difference. So even though it originally seemed like the S20 would be $200 more, it's actually $120 cheaper than the iPhone 12. So we're gonna get into more of that later on in the video, but let's start off with the physical differences between these phones. I wanna start off on the back, and they both have a glass back, but there are a couple different colors. So the iPhone has, I believe, five different colors, and I'll show you on the screen right now. And the Galaxy S20 has quite a few different colors as well. So, I mean, I'm not sure which one you guys are looking for. I think there are plenty of options for either of these. Then the next big difference physically, obviously, is going to be the flat edges on the iPhone versus the round edges on the Galaxy S20. And this is all the way around the entire phone from the flat screen on the front of the iPhone to the rounded, ed the rounded screen, kind of the waterfall screen on the Galaxy S20. Like, there's a lot to talk about that. Now, starting off with the aesthetics of that, I think it looks nicer, in my opinion, to have the flat edges on the iPhone 12. Just my own personal preference. I think it's a really cool look. It's different than a lot of other phones these days. But with that being said, it is a little bit more comfortable in your hand to have the Galaxy S20, which is a slightly narrower phone, and those rounded edges kind of sit in your palm really nicely. Now, on, on, in, on another note, it is actually, I think, you're less likely to drop the iPhone 12 because you have those flat edges. They give you a really nice gripping point. It, it's just less likely to drop. And if you do drop the iPhone 12, it has ceramic shield, which should give you four times the durability from cracks. Now the roundness of the Galaxy S20 with regards to the screen is a benefit and a drawback. So the benefit is that the screen looks a lot larger. You have almost no bezels on the left and right side, which is a really cool feature. It makes viewing media really an excellent experience on here. But the downside is you might have some palm rejection problems in the lower right corner. So if you reach up to type, sometimes your palm hits it and you end up like changing keyboards. It takes some getting used to. I don't have that issue at all anymore after using this phone for several months. Now flipping back over to the back side, the camera bump is a subtle difference here as well. So not only is it different aesthetically, but also the cameras on board. So the Galaxy S20 has a big advantage here, having a triple camera setup. So we have the ultra wide, the wide and the telephoto lens, which that telephoto lens actually provides a lot of value here, being a 64 megapixel camera. And we'll talk more about that later on in the video. The iPhone 12 only has the ultra wide and the wide angle lens, but we know of course a lot of the photos are based on image processing anyway, so we'll get into that testing later in the video. Really the other difference to notice physically with these is that the Galaxy S20 has expandable storage, so not only are, is there 128 gigs on board, uh, you could go up to 256 if you want, but you can also have up to a terabyte of expandable SD card storage on the top, big plus there for a lot of people. The iPhone doesn't have expandable storage, but it does have their nice little switch on the side to go to silent mode. It's something that if you use an iPhone a lot, you'll know that's kind of a nice feature to have. Now the back of these phones house some really interesting features underneath the glass as well. And so the Galaxy S20 has a really cool one I'll mention in a second, but the iPhone 12 here actually has MagSafe, which is their new thing. You can magnetically put chargers on here and wallets and cases. And while that's all really cool, and I'll talk about that in another video, uh, it's actually not especially different from the Galaxy S20. So you can still charge either of these with a MagSafe charger. They both have Qi wireless charging. And the only difference is really going to be like if you wanna stick a wallet on the back, which from me personally, I would be worried about that falling off anyway from what I've seen other people had them like sliding off when they go in their pocket. But regardless, it's a really cool innovation on Apple's part. Now, the Galaxy S20, the cool feature in there is actually the reverse wireless charging, which means that I could just turn that on on my phone, flip it upside down, and my phone is now a charging pad. So I can set it down and put a phone on there and charge another phone. I could charge earbuds, I could charge a watch. Whatever you want that has Qi wireless charging, you can charge it up with your phone. That's an amazing feature to have on here. So to conclude the first category of the overall build quality and aesthetics of these phones, 
I think they're pretty tied. It really depends on what you're looking for with aesthetics. I think they both look great. They both have an excellent build quality. And I mean, I'm gonna give that a tie. Which brings us to the next category of the screens, which honestly really couldn't be more different. We have the iPhone here, which is a flat display versus the Galaxy, which is a curved waterfall display. We have the hole punch camera on the Galaxy S20 versus the notch on the iPhone. So talking a little bit more about that, the Galaxy S20 is really geared to have a, a better screen to body ratio. So a really large screen in a very compact phone, it looks like it almost has no bezels. So the waterfall edge on either side gives you pretty much no bezel on the left or right. And then the hole punch camera allows the screen to go all the way up to the top. I think it looks really nice. And then on the Galaxy S or on the iPhone, you'll see we have larger bezels on the flat display. Flat displays are also nice because they're easier to put a screen protector on, but we have that large notch on the top for the Face ID. The Face ID is great and all, it works, unless you're wearing a mask outside, which has proven to be a problem in 2020. But otherwise, I, I think that I would definitely prefer the in-screen fingerprint sensor on the Galaxy S20. So the ultrasonic sensor means you just tap on the screen, it signs in very quickly. And really the only downside of that is if you're wearing gloves, you have to take your gloves off. So wearing a mask, wearing gloves, that's kind of the difference there. But I think both sign in very quickly and I definitely prefer the fingerprint sensor. Now the resolution is a big advantage on the Galaxy S20. So even though the iPhone 12 here finally upgraded from 720p to 1080, the Galaxy S20 is even more than that, which is a great advantage of the Galaxy S20 if they're both using the 60 hertz refresh rate, which means that it's showing you a new frame 60 times per second, which is great, but honestly, once you start using the 120 hertz on the Galaxy S20, you'll notice that it is significantly smoother. Scrolling around, doing everything on your phone just feels so much smoother, and then going back to 60 hertz, I mean, quite honestly, it kind of hurts your eyes. Now, both screens are very bright, very vibrant, and have excellent colors. Uh, the iPhone does have their true tone display, which means it changes what it looks like, like the hue of things based on your lighting. Uh, but overall, guys, between the screens, I think the clear winner here is definitely the Samsung Galaxy S20. Samsung's really known for their screens, so it was no surprise that they did a better job on this one. All right, now, as much as I wanna get into the crazy camera differences I was finding from my testing right now, I'm actually gonna do that in a second. And first, I wanna talk about what comes in the box because this is something that's very different this year compared to other years. The iPhone only comes with the phone and, and, and a cable and, and a sticker. They still, but it's only one sticker now. So Apple just kinda cuts more and more stuff out every time they make a phone. And Samsung, like, yes, they're cutting stuff out too, but if you buy the Galaxy S20, you're getting not just the phone and the cable, but you're also getting a built-in screen protector, so they come with one pre-installed, and it also comes with a fast charging block, which means it's not just like your regular slow charging Apple one, it actually charges significantly faster, which with a bigger battery is a really nice plus to have. And on top of that, the Galaxy S20 also comes with earbuds in the box. Now the next category I wanna talk about is actually the internal components of the phone, what's under the hood and really driving your experience with the phone. And this category is honestly a lot more interesting. So I'll explain why in a second, but starting off the iPhone 12 here has the A14 Bionic chip and the Galaxy S20 has the Snapdragon 865. And so both of those are pretty much the newest flagship processors out there. So the best for Android and the best for Apple. And when you're looking at the benchmarks between them, I mean, I've seen some discrepancies, but generally it's pretty agreed upon that the A14 is faster. So if you're trying to do some really high-end like video processing or gaming, then the A14 might be your choice. But to be completely honest, the majority of people out there, if you're doing everyday stuff or even playing some pretty advanced games, as long as they're not like crazy advanced, I mean, they're both gonna be extremely fast phones. Now, as far as the storage goes on here, I mentioned before that we're assuming that you have 128 gigs on either one of these, bringing them to about the same price. But by default, if you get the cheapest iPhone 12, it's actually 64 gigabytes, uh, so a slightly lower model, but they both go up to 256 as well if you're interested in that. The RAM and the battery life are also a little bit kind of iffy, and this is where it starts to get interesting. So the way iPhone treats RAM is very different from the way Android does, and so they don't actually disclose what the RAM is on their iPhone, nor do they disclose the battery size. So Apple doesn't really publish their battery, but we know it's 2,800 milliamp hours, and we know the Galaxy is 1,200 more than that, coming in at 4,000. And so just from that, you would assume the Galaxy should have a much longer battery life, but with the larger screen and the 120 hertz refresh rate, it, it ends up being a little bit closer, but I still have to give the edge here to the Galaxy, definitely having a slightly longer battery life. 
The Galaxy S20 is also a little bit weird about 5G, so they both have 5G, but the Galaxy S20 only has sub-6 5G unless you buy the Verizon version, in which case it only has millimeter wave 5G. So as far as the internals go, I think the advantage here has to be the iPhone, just because the A14, based on the benchmarks I've been seeing, is a faster processor. Now, as far as software goes, I'm not going to get into this one, guys. I mean, iOS versus Android, like, they're both very mature operating systems, but the way Samsung does their Android, they actually have a skin on there, it's called One UI, and it, it acts a little bit different. So they added some cool features on here. So if you like a lot of features, the Galaxy S20 is going to be a better pick, but if you're looking for something just smoother and easier to use and, and less, like, less stuff going on, like if you're not a big tech person, then the iPhone's gonna be easier to use. It's really simple, but I mean, just to touch on a few of the points I was talking about, like for example, you have Samsung DeX. So I could plug this phone into a monitor and literally have a full computer interface there. Uh, and it's, it's like having a laptop. It's really a cool feature that they baked into the Samsung interface, again, running Android. But like I said, it, it just comes down to features like that. If you want those, it's a better buy. Something else to mention about the display of the Galaxy S20, it also has an always on display option, whereas iPhones just don't have that for some reason. It's not something that I normally use, but some people like having that. All right, now getting into the camera differences on these phones, we have a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel wide angle lens on both of these phones, but the Galaxy S20 has that 64 megapixel, like 3X hybrid zoom is what they call it. And it's so it's essentially an, a 3X optical zoom, but it's really like a 1.8X zoom really, which is cool because you can actually use this to record 8K video. And I'll talk about 8K video in a second, but as far as the overall photos and videos go, let's just jump into that right now because the iPhone has really been pushing their like Dolby HDR on there. But we know at the same time, Samsung has their own HDR being HDR 10 plus. Uh, so let's see how those videos actually look. All right, so this is a sample video right here. You can see as I pan around, uh, the colors look really good on those trees over there. If we go up, we see the sky. This is not with the Dolby HDR on there, however. Let's see if we can zoom in and out. So if I pinch to zoom, we zoom out. Zooming in, you can see the lens switch is pretty smooth. And we can zoom all the way into 3X right here. Still shooting in 4K. So comment down below. Let me know how this looks to you. Right now here is the Samsung Galaxy S20 video. Really, really saturated sky over there, as you can see. Also, autofocus is really fast. My skin's look my skin tone looks pretty red though. So you can see regular, relatively stable. This is not uh, especially stabilized right now. I don't have any stabilization on, but it's just doing the default stabilization. Here's ultra wide. Here's the 3x zoom, which again still looks really good because we have that telephoto lens on here. And with this, we can zoom all the way into 12x. So much more practical zoom here. But if we go back to 1x, you'll see the video overall looks pretty good. All right, now I'm recording myself right now with the rear camera. So about an arm's length away and we have the microphone on the back next to the cameras. So this is what it would sound like. Again, comment down below. And Lena, let me know what this sounds like to you. All right, now this also has a microphone on the back, so this is what it would look and sound like if you're filming. I'm just filming myself right now, uh, so let me know how this sounds. All right, now this is the front-facing selfie camera. A big benefit is that this is also 4K on this phone, and again, it looks really good. We have great color behind me. I mean, as far as selfie cameras go, this is probably the best video out there. The selfie video, I think the skin tones on this look a little bit off. Everything's very saturated, as is pretty typical of a Samsung camera but you'll see the background, like that looks pretty decent. Just, I don't look that great. So looking at the photos, the ultra wides, honestly, they both look pretty similar, but it's definitely way more saturated on the Samsung Galaxy right here. It's also a little darker and a little sharper. So I think for landscapes, it looks okay. But again, you can see the same color pattern throughout all of these. The iPhone's going to be warmer and a little bit softer, while the Galaxy S20 is going to be way more saturated. For the ultra wide and the wide, they both look pretty good. As we start to zoom in, Obviously, without the telephoto, it's a little bit grainier with 2x digital versus 2x on the Galaxy S20. And of course, being that our telephoto lens is a really high resolution, once we zoom into 5x, you can really see this difference. I mean, I don't usually zoom in for photos, but if you plan on doing it, this is a really clear winner right here. But again, it's better for landscapes to have the S20, maybe if you really like high saturated photos. But to look a little bit more natural, I would say that the, the iPhone is going to do a better job. And then, especially getting into skin tones, which we'll do in a second, here again, another example of 2x digital on the iPhone versus the, the way better image when you have 2x with a telephoto lens, of course. But looking at the skin tones here with the iPhone, it's definitely a much more natural profile. Uh, this is the selfie camera. And then here you can see my skin looks way redder, some darker shadows under my hat. My eye looks a little weird. 
And then portrait mode with the rear camera looks significantly better on the iPhone in my opinion versus the Samsung which again my skin tone looks really really red here. As for the winner of this category, I think the iPhone camera, at least with video, looks significantly better, and with photos, it might look a little bit better. If you like really saturated photos, then the Galaxy's good, and if you're zooming in a lot, again, the Galaxy is good, but in general, I think the winner of this category has to be the iPhone. Now, in this comparison, I didn't actually show you any 8K video because, honestly, I don't think it looks especially great. It's, a, it's pretty noisy, pretty grainy. If you guys want to see more about the 8K video, I'll, I'll put a link right there uh, and in the description to my original review of this. And I had uh, an extensive review of the 8K video on here uh, because it's great for taking photos from a video, but the video itself, it's just so hard for the phone to process that I wouldn't pick that as an especially big positive for this phone, at least over the iPhone. So guys, in conclusion, between these two phones, they're honestly both excellent buys, and I think this is really easy for me to categorize who should get which phone. So, I mean, I think it's pretty simple. So if you like a lot of features, if you want Samsung Dex, you want everything on the interface, all the hardware, the big screen, you wanna play a lot of games, and you want Android, I mean, the obvious choice is going to be the Galaxy S20. The screen experience is just so much better. You have, you know, more cameras on the back, and you have some cool features on board. But if you're looking for, which I think a lot of people would be, if you're looking for just a simple experience, you wanna just turn on your phone, have it work, have it work really, really well, then the iPhone 12 is going to be an excellent buy. And if, you know, I told you this is $830, if that's a little bit expensive for you, maybe you wanna consider getting the Pixel 5, which is, in my opinion, the Android equivalent of the iPhone 12. And I actually compared them side by side in my recent video. So I'll link that right above as well. But guys, let me know which one you think is better. Are you on team iPhone or team Galaxy? Let me know which phone you like better and why in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.